I am no more in politics. Don't expect any such memorable speeches. <laughs> I, I am retired from politics, but not retired from public life. That's why I meet people, I go to conferences, and also try to meet the younger generation and try to motivate them, give them some ideas, take some feedback. So I go around the country that way. Meeting people, greeting people, talking with people, walking with people, hearing the people, spending time with the people is my favorite pastime. I used to do it more effectively and I was not in this constitutional responsibility, but now this constitutional responsibility, it has some protocols, some other restrictions, of course. Uh, they are there. Mm, my dear friends, Sri Prakash Singh Ji, Ramachandran Ji, Kaushik Deka, Vipul Mutgal, Sri N.K. Singh Ji, and the publisher, Sri Kapil, Kapish Mehra, distinguished people who have all made it to come to this important book release function, and my dear sisters and brothers, I am really delighted to release the book the Struggle for Police Reforms in India, written by Sri Prakash Singh Ji. He has served the country with distinction. The moment I received the letter, I had no hesitation to accept this invitation and also to come out to this function. Police reforms is a highly important and sensitive subject. For that matter, any reform. The Prime Minister gave a three-line mantra and I often quote it to remind everybody, including the government of course, reform, perform and transform. Transformation of the nation, transformation of the people's lives, transform it into a better society, transformation to get happiness, comfort, happiness. So you need to bring reforms. This is a basic organization. You need to bring reforms. You need to bring judicial reforms. You need to bring ref legal reforms. You need to bring administrative reforms. You need to bring electoral reforms. Electoral reforms also, you see what is happening in Parliament. Prakash Singh was mentioning about some report. I don't think it's accurate, 43% or whatever it is, because I have been in legislature for the last 19 years in Parliament and also for a decade in the Legislative Assembly. There are a couple of people who are having criminal cases, but as those cases are dragging on for years together, and conviction is not taking place, and rejection by the people is not taking place, so often people's perception is that uh, most of the politicians are criminals. I made some study and then found uh, that you violate 144, you participate in an andolan, there are cases against you also. You can count those cases. But I am not trying to undermine, yes, there are very serious corruption, a very serious case. Corruption is a very serious case. Murder, molestation, where there is moral turpitude involved. That is more objectionable, and that is more serious, and it has to be taken note by all the concerned. One, reform the system. Second is, what is required is a political will, then followed by administrative skill. Then you can go for anything. So political will, is lacking undoubtedly at various levels. That's why in spite of the matter being taken to Supreme Court and Supreme Court giving a clear-cut judgment also, many of the states have not taken up reforms because we are all aware policing is a state subject. I am not trying to absolve a central government. Yes, central also has certain duty. That's why in parliament also we are and we try to discuss, some people say, sir, it's a state subject. But at the same time, we need to create a proper atmosphere. We need to 
create proper mindset among the people. The purpose of this book is to create that awareness among the people. <coughs> Arouse the consciousness for reforms. That is the purpose. So, Prakashing these efforts are not going waste. They are having effect. The administrators at various levels, I suggest that they should read this book. Politicians also. And also the bureaucracy. And then try to do whatever they can at their level. Simply blaming one section here, politician, or the administrators, or the bureaucracy, or the delays by judiciary, alone is not going to suffice. We need to really do introspection. Why are we are lacking? Why it's not happening? So we have to apportion the responsibilities at various levels and try to take correctives at the earliest. Otherwise, people slowly lose their confidence. It is quoted just now the latest case of three states, police fighting among themselves. And a discussion in media. Such things are not good for a healthy system. India is definitely moving forward, undoubtedly. Moving faster also. Economic prosperity is coming, but at the same time, we should also work for happiness of the people. Happiness will come only when there is peace, when there is rule of law implemented, and everybody follows the rules. Someone asked me, sir, can you answer in one line what is meant by Desa Bhakti? I said, in one line. I said, everybody doing their duty is Desa Bhakti. I said, you do, if everybody does their duty, including citizens, then the country will definitely prosper. So, pre, most prerequisite for progress is the prerequisite is the peace. Peace is prerequisite for progress. If you have tension, you cannot pay attention. It's very simple. So, police being the main force to maintain that peace, they need to be progressive, they need to be aggressive against the crime, and they need to be people friendly, they need to be sensitive, and they need to be neutral politically, but they need to be firm and aggressive as far as the crime is concerned. There have been attempts undoubtedly to introduce reforms over the years, but uh, there is not much progress as expected. We should now give a renewed thrust for implementing reforms in police force. Police reforms, as a phrase, is an umbrella expression with a number of critical aspects. In brief, police reforms aim to transform the values, the culture, uphold rather than transform. Uphold the values, culture, policies and practice of police organizations. It deals with the interface of the people, with the public, with a sense of accountability. While being transparently sensitive to the rule of law, democratic values and human rights. I need to hardly emphasize that policing is very important to prevent and detect crime and to maintain law and order. In the wake of revolt in 1857, that is the first freedom movement, the British has brought this Police Act of 1861 with the prime aim of having an agency which would uphold their imperialistic interests. That was the purpose of creating this force. They raised a police force subservient to their interests and one which would carry out all their orders, right or wrong, sparing no thought to ethics or morality. During the freedom struggle, the police was mainly used to suppress and oppress our freedom fighters and also the revolutionaries. 
after independence, the role of police has to be redefined. And the police training and orientation has to be radically different. Of course, it has changed to some extent. Over the years following independence, there were instances where the police force was perceived to be politicized with erosion in the values, objectives and practice of police organizations across the country. There seems to have been some gap in the overall objective of the force and the way laws were enforced. Of course, the abuse and misuse of the police has reached its peak during the infamous emergency, when it was used with impunity to suppress human rights and imprisoned thousands of people, including all those political opponents of the ruling dispensation. When I was in jail, one of my professors also was brought in. I was wondering, this professor is a very simple man, very God-fearing, very humble. He comes to the class, takes his subject, and then you don't get involved in anything. Then I made inquiries informally, why this professor is there, and he used to sometimes weep also within the prison and saying that, when are you going to be released? And some fellows, in order to this thing him, they used to say, no, no, there is no question of our going. She is not going to leave anybody. We'll be finished here only. So this man's worry used to be more, this thing. So he used to come to me and then ask me, I said, don't worry, sir, there is a movement going on in the country. One day or other, emergency will be lifted and all. After my inquiries, it's interesting to note that one day, he offered lunch to some people who were wearing the saffron dress and they were called as Aranda Margis at that time, those people. <laughs> Just lunch. You do not know what is Aranda Marga also. He said Aranda Marga means we'll give Aranda. They are doing a good thing. <laughs> so he just hosted lunch, that's all, nothing else. He was also arrested under Misa. They said I invited Jay Prakash Narayan to the university, that's why I was also booked. But of course, that was a turning point in my life, that 17 and a half months I spent in jail. That gave me a lot of understanding about public life and really made my determination strong. The setting up a police commission, National Police Commission in 77, the first national commission after independence, marking a key step aiming to change India's large police organization. The commission had then submitted reports with the detailed proposals for police reforms taken together. These reports constituted the first thorough study and review of the police system in India, ranging from registering FIRs and jurisdictional issues to addressing complaints against police officials, especially those related to custodial deaths, rape, torture, and injuries, to providing necessary protection from injustice and exploitation to the people of weaker sections, to the enactment of regulatory laws, and having necessary guidelines in place for police reforms. To name only a few, the reports of the National Police Commission covered extensive ground in this domain. We need to work on these suggestions and usually in reforms in our police forces at individual and also at the institutional levels. Sporadic cases of custodial deaths, fake police encounters here and there, corruption, obscenity of neutrality, absence of our neutrality, disregard of human rights and the rule of law have not only severely dented the image of police, but have made it a daunting task for the common man to visit a police station and lodge a complaint. Of course, now it's made mandatory. FIR has to be registered. We have to make policing more people friendly and the law enforcement process easily understood and accessible. My dear friends, I first think the reform has to be attitude, a receptive face in police station. 
smiling and affectionate response to the complaints of the people. That is what is required. So you need to change the attitude. You have to reorient them time and again, refresh through refresh courses. You have to motivate them and change their attitude. That is what is more important according to me. Second one is that you need to increase the strength also. And the strength, I do not mean strengthening, strengthening top heavy. This is a complaint against police system. Number of DGPs. There is one state, number of DGPs. DIGs. Additional DIGs. But the strength of a police station, one is to seven to one is to fourteen and all, it is static. This is a really a sad state of affairs. That requires reform. You need to strengthen the police force at the gra grassroots level. There is no need to have this many top heavy posts. I am very clear about it. Like. Uh, Having a chief minister, number of deputy chief ministers, number of deputy chief ministers. The only they have title, nothing else. I don't know about perquisites, etc. You have to strengthen the police force at the grassroots level. The Supreme Court has given number of directions also. Those directions also have to be understood in proper perspective and they should be implemented. The Government of India has also taken certain initiatives including a project to decriminalize minor offences and violations under different laws. The Government is also a processing of enacting Criminal Procedure Identification Bill 2022. It seeks to update the identification of the Prisoners Act 1920, a legislation passed more than 100 years ago. While the existing act covers fingerprints, footprints and photographs, the latest act would also authorize iris and retina scan, handwriting or any other examination referred to in relevant sections of the CRPC of convicts. In April 2016, the Prime Minister, as was mentioned, called for making the police a smart force, standing for force which is strict and sensitive, modern and mobile, alert and accountable, reliable and responsive, tech savvy and trained. I am happy to note that some of these measures have been initiated in this direction, but we need to do a lot more. This observation of the Prime Minister, every word has a larger sense. That has to be understood in proper sense. We are facing multitude of crimes in new domains such as cyber crimes, economic offences and online frauds which require special investigative expertise due to their sophisticated and often transboundary nature. We need to skill and upgrade our police forces to tackle these 21st century crimes. It is heartening to note that the government is also giving very high priority to greater use of technology in the day-to-day -day working of police. I am happy to learn that the Indian Police Foundation has been making efforts to realize the vision of a smart Indian police, especially by bringing internal reforms, technology adaptation, digital transformation, and a training to improve the professional and ethical standards of police. Training at various levels, at various intervals, is very much required because the situation is changing. Two issues that need to be addressed on a war footing are filling up a huge number of vacancies in the police department and strengthening the police infrastructure in tune with requirements of the modern age policing, housing of police personnel, also calls for improvement also. You see the police quarters in certain states, horrible. 
there is also a need for senior police officers to lead by example and ensure that the behavior of policemen towards the common man is courteous and friendly a visit to police station should be a hassle free experience for a person who goes there seeking help before concluding let me pay my respect to policemen who died in the line of duty who had laid down their lives battling terrorists extremists separatists successionists mafia and all shades of lawless elements in different parts of the country some pe people suggest and also complain that there is too much political interference i don't uh, i don't intend to disagree with that that's an observation but is it only in political interference that is making the system to suffer and making ineffective and getting bad name if you are honest if you are sincere if you are dynamic what a politician can do maximum transfer maximum transfer na nothing else this also has to be discussed and analyzed and understood by all people if everybody is honest then the government also of the they, they they don't have any other choice so first and foremost thing is one officer who is known for toughness and integrity of late started getting so much criticism and flack from the people because of pressure so the one day he met me i told him by what is happening he said sir i am also not happy what is your advice i told him what advice i can give you i am no more in politics my advice for you you is simple follow the constitution and conscious that's all that will solve your problems and you will get good sleep he was happy in sure he could understand what i meant later he told me sir i am really happy to receive that advice i try to follow it friends as i told you that this is an age of reformation and we need to bring reforms in every sector even in political sector also people has to select and elect political leaders by considering character caliber capacity and conduct four c's i repeat it wherever i go but unfortunately what is happening is certain people have replaced these four c's by other four c's the other four c's are caste community cash and criminality and uh, at times they are getting advantage so people also has to be really conscious about the need to select and elect good people you deserve the people you elect na simply voting for somebody and then lamenting later is not going to help and also this anti defection law has become a mockery i told people who are all responsible bring changes it is not effective it is defective defection has become of late affection with perfection <laughs> if you defect single you, you are disqualified if you do it in a wholesale scale then it is allowed as per the law in in a democracy one must have the right to change parties whenever you find the parties going against the principles but you must leave the post which you got through that party that is the basic responsibility that will not happen by itself unless in the present day this thing unless you bring reforms and reforms also that people who are facing criminal cases politicians particularly officials those cases should be disposed of at the earliest speedy judicial system don't it number of years they are just getting on getting on from one court to other court i don't know whether it will come to a conclusion in their lifetime even uh, people changing parties and it's challenged in court also i have two instances i don't want to name the people get unnecessary get into controversy 
they have completed their tenure and they are about to complete their second tenure also, still the case is pending. Do they? Judiciary delay also is causing problem. So judiciary also must introspect. Whatever the government has to do, government has to do it. Filling up the vacancies. But at the same time, the people there who are there to give justice delivery, they should also act in a more responsive and responsible manner. And the legislatures also, they have to perform. And they have to discuss, debate and decide. But you know, often disruption is taking place. Disruption, obstruction. This is another area about which people are very much concerned. I am the presiding officer of the house, upper house, house of elders. Sometimes what is happening in the upper house is really disheartening, disgusting. Because people try to follow the parliament, the upper house, and the legislature. So that way, there is a need for reforms in every sector. We are mostly today focusing our attention on uh, police reforms. We need to have structural changes also. It's a process. It's a continuing process. But what we need is that the governments at various levels, they should be alive to the reality and bring in the changes. For that, they need to have political will. Thank you very much, uh, Prakash Indji, for giving me this uh, opportunity. A progressive modern India must have a police force which meets the democratic aspiration of the people. That is my concluding word. Thank you very much, Nashkar.